All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from sunny San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Jason Scott, who is in Tacoma, Washington. How are you doing, Jason? I'm great. Happy to be here, John. Really excited about our conversation. Yeah, and, uh, and Jason's a, a leader who jumps in to take care of people and get SHT done or stuff done. We always keep clean on this show, but anyway. Um, and uh, so you went from being a Navy rescue person to now over two decades as a CEO of 120 VC, leading global transformation efforts for people like DirecTV and Trader Joe's, Blizzard Entertainment, all of those good ones. And that's what we're going to talk about today, the transformative power of getting stuff done. Uh, so Jason, let's let's dive into it. So, I mean, what what do you mean when you mean the transformative power of getting of getting stuff done? Because I mean, a lot of people would say, "Wow, I get stuff done every day," uh, and it doesn't. It just it just clears my list. It doesn't really transform anything. Okay, so excellent question. I'm super excited to talk about this. So first, one of the fifth or the fifth dysfunction of team of team is in inattention to results. And it's true that we do get things done every day. And if you think about how we feel when we check things off a list, often it feels really good. We, we accomplished something, we checked it off a list. The reason for this is because there's four neurochemicals that make us feel good and also open up our memory and, and learning centers. And that's dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, and uh, endorphins, <clears throat> which hopefully are not being produced in the workplace unless you're an extreme athlete. That said, when we check something off a list or we get something done, our body rewards us with a shot of dopamine. I started out in the business of project management. We then got into product management, organizational change leadership, uh, team demand management. Somewhere along the line, I realized that leadership in and of itself is a change discipline. Nobody hires a leader because they want their organization to be the same in a month, mm -hmm. six months, or a year. And then in running my own business, I had to de develop an efficient operational management approach, meaning an approach to getting things done within my own business, not right. just helping my clients get things done. And so over the years, you know, when I started, I thought I was like in project management, and then I thought I was in product management. And then I realized ultimately I was really in the business of helping people get things done and was often parachuted into situations where the leaders in the organization didn't feel like the teams were delivering the outcomes that they needed. My right. observations were always that in these situations on teams that were getting the outcomes that their leaders thought that they needed were, was that they were stressed out. They were working during dinner, answering emails, text messaging, answering phone calls, getting yelled at by their significant others for doing this. They were working weekends. Essentially their quality of life was terrible and their economic prosperity was not assured. They were often worried that they were gonna lose their jobs at a minimum that their reputation would be besmirched. Mm -hmm. at, in working with them, my job was to take them from a team not delivering the necessary results to a team delivering the necessary results. Um, this is something that comes very natural to me. So, uh, you know, I, it's not a big deal, but in helping other people do it, I've watched that then transform their lives. People on winning teams don't work during dinner. They focus on their significant others. People on winning teams don't work weekends. They spend time doing the things that fill them up so they can be productive in the coming week. People on winning teams or teams that are getting the necessary or expected results have economic prosperity that is assured. So I'm in the business delivering the transformative power of getting stuff done in that we enable teams, whether it be an operations team, an executive team, a project product change team to get the results that their organizations need and in doing this we're improving people's quality of life we're improving not just the economic economic for the I, I, sorry we're improving <laughs> not just the economic prosperity of the individual but the team and even the company so we like to imagine right. a world where the vast majority of teams are getting the necessary and expected results because we believe that that is a world that has better right. quality of life and improved economic prosperity yeah, and um, you know, so one of the interesting things that you said that there, Jason, is is this whole idea of focusing on results, right? And I think that's where a lot of the problems come from. Uh, is 
within organizations is results are ill-defined or they're just set like the overall result is put up there and no and no kind of milestones or results in between and people are kind of left to their left to their own devices so as you say I mean, they're maybe they're working the weekends, maybe they're working late at night, but maybe what they're doing actually isn't contributing as much to the ultimate outcome as they think it is because of lack of definition along the way. I wholeheartedly agree. And there there lies the trap of dopamine. Um, mm -hmm. Answering emails, which is not necessarily rel related to getting the necessary results or the necessary outcomes, actually causes our brain to produce dopamine. Checking checking our phone, right? That's why so many people are addicted to social media, mm -hmm. are addicted to notifications, right? It's difficult to turn the notifications off because you feel like, God, if I turn my notifications off, I might miss something. The simple fact is, mm -hmm. though, you're probably not going to miss anything that's super important. And if, if you were super clear on what your goals were, it would be much easier to focus on those things. So unfortunately, being busy replaces the need to actually focus on the results or the outcomes because we're rewarded for the same as we are as if we were actually getting the necessary expected results. And so if you were to look at which one is harder, being busy or getting the necessary and expected results? Well, getting the necessary and expected results is harder and humans and machines, and I forget the name of the law, are wired to take the past path of least resistance. So most people are busy mm -hmm. as opposed to productive. And then to your initial point, when clients call, they've almost always diagnosed their problem. Kind of like we do these days before we go to the doctor. Like we get on the internet and right. we figure what we've got mm -hmm. and we go to the doctor and we tell them what we've got. And the doctor's like, whoa, 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 slow down. Let me, let me take yeah. your blood pressure. Let me take your temperature. <laughs> Let's have a conversation. And so I often get calls. Somebody will tell me that their project management process is broken. Their product management process is right. broken. Uh, their ability to prioritize at the portfolio level or just their operations, their operational process is broken. And it, what I always know is that those things are like brown or black belts, these disciplines that they're talking about. Mm -hmm. And if they're not getting the necessary expected results, it's highly likely that they're the people in their organization haven't graduated past the white belt, which is simply a culture of discipline, trust, transparency, and accountability. And so they have to really start working on those things, which are related to what you mentioned, which are clearly defining the necessary outcomes, clearly communicating the necessary outcomes, working with the teams to help them solve for those outcomes or architect their own roadmap to accomplishing that shared goal. And then monitoring and providing support for the accomplishment of those outcomes, as opposed to just being busy and hoping that the, the individuals on teams can just figure it out themselves. If the leaders just cowboying up, their teams will follow suit and they will be busy as opposed to getting the outcomes that they actually need. Yeah. And, and you know, what's uh, fascinating about that because uh, just uh, it, it, number one, coming back to what you mentioned about, you know, the dopamine and phones and stuff. I mean, as you probably know better than I do, the studies on on kids now that they're so addicted, like that they can't go longer than a certain amount of time and they have to get into zombie scrolling on, on TikTok or Instagram or whatever just to, you know, replenish those dopamine hits. So it's it is it's quite scary um, well, what's happening it, there. It's sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say it's it's the reason for the rampant diagnosis of ADHD. We're mm -hmm. allowing our children's why brains to get wired around constant stimulus. They they have no downtime. They they can't sit in a car and just stare out the window because they mm -hmm. they have been they have trained their brains that their brain needs constant stimulus, which then leads to ADHD. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. I mean, I know the I know some one kid, a uh, friend of my son's, like who actually get anxiety if his phone was you know going to five percent battery and he was nowhere to charge it. It became a very anxious thing. But um, go, going back to what you were saying then about the busy the busy work, because I do think that again, just saying pervasive culture today, it's all about instantaneous shortcuts, get things done. Oh, there's a tool. Like I found the tool to do this, and I think that that's part of the problem is that we find all these ways to deliver things fast without checking our what we're delivering is that what we actually really want to deliver is it having the impact is it whatever and then when it doesn't we just move to another one yeah i mean it, it i it's funny that you bring up the hacks because we actually 
we actually make fun of them a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. Really, like they're they're an illusion because getting something done as opposed to getting something done right is the same as not getting yeah. it done. Um, delivering something as opposed to delivering the thing that will achieve the necessary outcome isn't done. And so we often will say um, a marketing hack is simply developing something that people need. Uh, if you want to be a writer, write every day. If you want to lose weight, lift heavy things and move. Mm -hmm. These are all the real hacks as opposed to shortcuts that don't actually get you there. I mean, look at all the, the diets. They're all hacks, right? All these diets over yeah. the course of my lifetime that have come out, they're, people think, oh, if I do this for a little while, it'll work. And it, it does work for a little while. And then they stop. Mm -hmm. The real hack is commit to, and by the way, this isn't me, <laughs> commit to a healthy yeah. diet, right? Move constantly and lift things and you will most likely achieve the outcome, right? So which one is the hack? The fad diet? or the commitment to a healthy lifestyle. Yeah. I think the commitment exactly. to a healthy lifestyle is hack. So when it comes to humanity, I think sometimes the long and hard way is really the shortest way to accomplish the necessary outcome. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, yeah, there's a, what is that old saying? You know, the, the long way, the long way round is the short way home. And I think uh, I think you're you're 100 percent correct. And here's another issue. And I'm sure you bump up against this a lot now. You know, if you work with with uh, project leaders or team leaders or, or people who are in, in charge of things. I don't think I don't think a lot of people have the, the framework anymore on how to do things systematically, because, again, uh, they're used to just getting things, you know, used to just activities, maybe, you know, shortcuts, hacks, whatever. And, and I think there's a dearth of people who can take a step back and say, whoa, slow down and let's plan this out. You know, um, what's it? Um, more more haste less hurry or something something like that but like let's take a step back and i think that's the part that's counterculture today unfortunately is taking a step back and taking a moment to shut everything aside and plan properly it, so i'm in the business of being captain obvious mm -hmm. i meet with teams that aren't getting the necessary and expected results i i work with them to just sort of talk through what it is that they're doing today. And then when I point out what you just pointed out, which is that in order to get, they actually have to go slow to go fast. They actually have to yeah. pause, take a pause, get super clear on what it is that they're trying to accomplish and how it creates value for the organization. What happens is I watch them have this light bulb moment where they're like, oh my God, this makes so much sense. And they knew better. Like it's nothing uh -huh. new. I'm not saying anything new. Um, in fact, it's a little embarrassing that I have a job because, again, like I said, I'm in the business of being Captain Obvious. I'm not bringing anything innovative. I'm just bringing people back to the basics. And that is if you want a job done well, you have to focus, be intentional, and get the work done as opposed to yeah. moving fast and breaking things. I mean, you can move fast and break things. It's a very popular <laughs> saying this day. We all know where it came from. But like... <laughs> The result will be that you have broken things, right? And the, the other thing that people spend time doing is um, they spend time trying to look good as opposed to doing good. And and it's mm -hmm. easier to, to, to look good than it is to do good, do the hard work. And so the, the hack that I'm always bringing everybody back to is anything worth accomplishing is going to be hard work. So just commit to it. And do the work and you'll you will get the results that you need early in my career i bought into the fact that i was talented uh, until my career stopped going the direction that i wanted it to go and that was <laughs> that was crushing and so in working and so then in having to explore this like i'm not successful anymore does that mean i'm not talented here's what i realized i am not talented i am just willing to do the hard work and therefore my superpower first is my team but my personal superpower is simply having the grit to keep working through any situation because the only way to get the outcomes that we need is really to fail forward. It's never perfect until it's perfect. And if you give up, you're never going to get to the outcomes that you need.
Yeah, and and I'm, I was just writing that down so I didn't forget it because I'm so glad you you raised that issue of of the of the hard work because here's something I believe right I believe you can teach people most things but one thing you cannot teach people is hard work and and unfortunately I mean I think that comes from you know inside of you and your background your way all of all of that good stuff. And again, you know, the whole hard work thing is is almost counterculture again. But I mean, I I absolutely agree with you. I think that fundamentals and hard work. It's like I I do martial arts, right? And sometimes oh. I go to sometimes I go to class, right? Uh, and and my master, you know, he'll say, okay, tonight we're going to do basic footwork, and it's like something you've done thousands of times before. You learned way 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 back in time, but you go back and you always you always find that maybe you know you're you're cheating a little bit on your stance or you're doing something you've changed something or whatever and you bring it back and i think that's the thing is like bringing it back to fundamentals uh, is not is not the most exciting or interesting thing but it's the most necessary well which begs the question do we ever truly master anything or are we just on the constant journey of mastery i think pro golfers are super clear about the fact that they are always reworking on their posture their positioning mm -hmm. their swing and you know let's face it that golfing is not as complicated as martial arts there are there's like a, only a handful of moves or positions and so if you compare and contrast like of course martial artists are gonna have to continue to come back to the basics and practice these things right so again mm -hmm. mastery i think is an illusion in that there's an end when in fact mastery is like anything else, a constant journey. Yeah. Well, if you ever saw me play golf, I don't play golf anymore, but if you ever saw me play golf, you'd probably revise that one and say, well, he makes it look pretty difficult. <laughs> <laughs> I'm terrible. I, I, I do. I don't play golf because I am terrible. Yeah. I once lost um, with playing golf with clients in an 18 round, two boxes of balls. And that's when I hung up my bag. <laughs> uh, I love it. Um, so, what what is your what what is if there's one piece of advice that you would like people to take away um, today? What would it be? Because I think the the work that you're doing, and I think everything that you're saying, is so 100 percent spot on. And I think it's a real antidote to some of the chaos we see today, and the dissatisfaction. Because let's face it. If you're just constantly, as you said, stressed and you're working and you're working nights and you're just ticking stuff off your to-do list, but it's not bringing either the results that you expected or the, the, the satisfaction, if you like, really at the end of the day, it's a short-term thing when you cross something off a list. But if it doesn't have an ultimate impact on something, then it's kind of hollow. So what, what would be one piece of advice you'd give people who maybe find themselves trapped in that situation? That one's easy. So taking it back to the transformative power of getting stuff done, because getting the things done that we feel we want to get done is uplifting and fulfilling. Mm -hmm. Feeling like we're stuck and can't accomplish the things that we want to get done is is demoralizing. It's it's terrible. The one thing that I, I have noticed or observed is that there are a lot of people that feel like if they have a good idea, it will just happen for them, that they will <laughs> they will get noticed, right? That they will get found. And you know, the old adage of we build it, if we build it, they will come. Well, that adage comes from a time where there weren't billions of people on the planet. There weren't billions of brands on the planet that there, there weren't virtual companies that nobody's going to see unless you're marketing mm -hmm. and, and getting it in front of them, right? And so my advice is be happy in that if you want to accomplish something that doesn't defy the law of physics, you absolutely can if you commit to doing the work, which mm. means you have to throw away victim mentality. It's always somebody else's fault that you're not getting it done, right? Just commit to doing the work. Know that you're not going to get found. You're not like you'll do the work. It's going to be hard. It's not going to happen as fast as you want it to. And if you don't give up, you'll get there. And if you're not willing to do that, just be cool with where you're at. Just be okay, mm -hmm. right? If you're willing to do the work, the work will fulfill you and you will achieve what you want and you will you will get fulfillment from that, the transformative power of getting stuff done. If you're not willing to do the work, the transformative power of getting stuff done is not for you. 
just be cool with the life that you're living and stop telling yourself that you need to be somebody that you're not willing to do the work to be. Because happiness yeah. is more important than anything else. You get one shot at this. Yeah, no, listen, I, I think that's a fantastic piece of advice. And it is, I mean, because I think often you know, people sometimes uh, are trying to fulfill either the expectations they think society have of them or the people around that have of them. And so sometimes they people go through the motions of saying, oh, yeah, 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 I'm trying to, I'm doing this because I want to get to here. and blah. But deep down, they don't really want to. And uh, and I think to your point, I think that's a great point. The thing is, if you're not willing to do the hard work, if you really don't want to, you just be honest about it and, and and enjoy your life. I mean, I think that's fantastic advice. Right, because happiness is a choice. We can choose to be yeah. happy with wherever we're at. And in our modern lives in the United States, I, I don't think every country out there has that luxury. We do live in Disneyland, but here in the United States, mm -hmm. we can choose to be happy with wherever we're at because wherever we're at in most cases is pretty darn good. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I always say to people when I hear people complaining too much here, I always say, you know, you know, you really need to go live in another country um, for a year or two to understand how easy life is here. And yes, everybody has issues and problems, but this, this, this country is set up to make life easy for you. And it's not the same other places. And I, I, I always say that to people, I say, you really need to go live somewhere else before you start making these sweeping generalizations about how terrible things are. <laughs> right. um, listen, right uh, Jason, this has been, this has been fantastic. Uh, all of Jason's information will be below this video, but before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Oh, uh, I'm thinking, gosh, we've we've basically covered it. Uh, like like I said, mm -hmm. I'm in I'm in the business of helping people get the outcomes that they need. Uh, the name of the company is 120 VC. We've been around 22 years. Clients like Trader Joe's, DirecTV, as we've mentioned. Um, my family and I are obsessed with outdoor adventure, so we're either camping or boating on the weekends. Uh, we've recently launched two new brands as part of the 120 VC brand community, Brick and Matter, which is a mm -hmm. new age marketing company. In that, we're helping brands start with culture and develop a product and a brand narrative that actually solves problems for people as opposed to makes them money. Uh, and then right. we, we are launching here at Overland Expo in Bend, Oregon in July, Next Jump Outfitters, which eliminates 50% of the work that it takes to live a life of adventure. So people that are like, has oh. wanted to do it are always talking about wanting to take that adventure, but don't know where to start. Like, what gear should I buy? Like, we, we, have solved for all of that so it just it makes it easier to wow. get people outside and, and moving fantastic that sounds awesome uh, well listen thanks again jason thank you for watching and listening and i will see you all again very soon thank you thanks john